love it. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you some of the newest updates to D3 Mesh uh, Beta. The newest version is 1.1. Go ahead and load that up here. Okay, the uh, first prompt here is to open Mesh Mixer. So let's go ahead and do that. We could have done it from this button right here, but you can also do it this other way. So now that it's open, try again. Okay, now we're good to go. Um, this is just a, an overview of basically what some of the new uh, the new features are. So we'll just quickly go through that, and then uh, in a couple other videos, we'll go through things in a bit more detail. Um, so the first thing is, let's just go through the newest model builder. Um, and you know the thing is with uh, with model builder, it doesn't need to be obviously any type of dentition. It can be a dentalist. That's just fine. Um, this was a scanned stone model, and um, only reason I bring this one is to kind of show you um, the auto align feature. I know it's a bit weird, and probably people are a bit confused about it, um, but this is a pretty good case of of how it's intended to be used. So it's upright and kind of weird like this, and I already know. You know, it's not the correct orientation to get this thing going. So just go ahead and click that. And it should just put it into a better orientation or uh, position uh, for this tool to work. Okay. And, you know, it did pretty good. A um, little bit off center there, but. Not so bad. Brought it down and it's horizontal. It's ready to go. So let's hit go. First thing you'll notice is there is some references now. So it says anterior pointing downwards. So that kind of gives me a reference and a just a, a reminder to make sure that the teeth are facing downwards. Even though on the right side there it says rotate model to align uh, with teeth facing down, but just to make sure. Um, just shows a little model there and an arrow pointing down. So let's get that better aligned. That looks good right there. And let's hit next. Right here, you can see there's another uh, little reminder, occlusal facing upwards. And that is also true right now. So we're good there. Hit next. That looks good there. Hit next. Okay, and then for this one, we don't need to necessarily um, draw anything here because I really just want the whole model to be based and to be able to be 3D printable. So I'm just going to hit next. Just takes the whole thing. There's nothing we need to delete. So we'll hit next. Okay, um, so we'll just do a standard base height and standard uh, wall thickness, 2.8, just go. No holes, but we'll click next. That's going to hollow. Okay, hit next to uh, plane cut. And there we go. We got our typical normal model. Um, but this time there's a couple more options. We can try to print vertical, again, experimental. Um, you can also export directly from here. Let's try the uh, print vertical. You'll kind of see what it does. I mean, literally, as long as you have the orientation correct and you have it facing downwards and it's um, you know lined up pretty well. It should just rotate the model and plane cut the base and uh, get it into a good vertical printing position. So if you don't have much room back here, you may want to add that before you get started. But anyway, check it out and kind of see what I'm talking about here.
Uh, so there we go. We have it now. Plain cut at the bottom. This should print. No problem without supports. Um, and there it is. Um, so the next thing uh, that we can do here, well, I'll show you right here, is that uh, there's a new button that's now available, Undo Mesh Mixer. You can uh, click this at any time, and it'll, look, and it'll just uh, undo the last step that you've done in Mesh Mixer. So click there, deleted that. I can go Undo Mesh Mixer, and it'll just undo it. So that's just handy to have every once in a while. Um, so now let's go to the label generator. The next new feature here. Call this grandma's digital denture. It's a lot of text. Probably shouldn't have done that, but we'll go ahead. And then uh, prompt says, after accepting the mouse, uh, or accepting this prompt, um, basically the application will take control of the mouse. So just hit spacebar and just wait. Kind of does some things on its own. Even with that much text, it still works decent. I probably should have separated that out into maybe a couple different labels, but still works. Okay, now it has to uh, set the location of the label. I'm going to go ahead and just pop it on the inside here. So I left click um, where I want it to be. You can actually kind of draw like an area too if you like. Next. And the label pops up. Pretty small right there, but we can go ahead and adjust this. Make it a little bit bigger. I think that should be fine for uh, printing. We should be able to read that, no problem. And the nice thing is, I mean, you can pretty much move this around onto any surface. Um, sorry, I right-clicked on accident. Um, but you can pretty much just move it around, and it will adapt to any type of contour or curve, um, which is pretty amazing, actually. Um, it's it's tough to add t add text to uh, a surface that's not flat or perfectly round or something like that. So this is actually pretty pretty cool. Um, you can spin it around this way, make it a little bit bigger if you'd like, and that's all you need to do. Then you hit finish. Got your label on there, and that is ready to go. All right, so those are pretty much the the main uh, highlights to the 1.1 update. Um, there's there'll be a couple more videos coming up here where I'll get into a bit more detail on um, some more advanced uh, features and the way to kind of do some other things um, that this program can do. That it. it you kind of just got to work around some things. There's some pretty pretty cool workarounds you can do as well. Um, so anyway, um, those videos will be coming up. Uh, thank you so much for, for watching.